Hello my friends and welcome to the Cat Scrappiness YouTube channel. Katie here and today I have this super simple beach scene I'm going to show you how to create using two distress inks. Let's jump in. So the products I've got are um, the sponge in the box sprinkles. These are brand new to the shop. They're little sponge bobs. And I've got some mini slimline acetate sheets. I've got the mini slimline triple frames dies which are also new to the shop. And I've got the Everyday Brush Stroke stamp set that I'll use that Do What You Love sentiment in there. And then I'm going to be using the new Summer Kawaka stamp set that's also new to the shop. And the ink I'll be using is the Gina K Designs Amalgam ink that you see there, but that one is in Obsidian. If you don't have the Obsidian, you could use Jet Black. And for my alcohol markers, I'm going to be using these from Art and Fly. Uh, the inks, distress inks that I'm going to be using are Antique Linen and Salty Ocean. And those are going to create the perfect beach surf scene uh, that we have in our card today. So let's get started. So I'm going to uh, put down my stamps onto a piece of Cougar Super Smooth 80 pound cardstock. And it's very similar to the 80 pound Nina Classic Crest. Uh, this was a little bit cheaper and I really like how smooth it is. It reminds me mostly of the Gina K Designs white layering cardstock that she has, um, which seems to always be sold out. So I had bought this to test it out to see if I really liked it. And I love it. I use it as layering pieces inside my cards um, and things like that. So um, I really like it to use the alcohol markers on as well. So to start, I'm going to just color up the Kawaka in this, um, it's like a, a tannish brown. Um, I do show this the color uh, that's on the cap here in just a few minutes. Um, for anyone who's you who uses the art and fly markers and you you may want to know uh, these are very comparable to the Copic markers which is why I chose to go with them um, to start an alcohol marker collection because they're very affordable and they come with refills and uh, replacement brush tips which are the same brush tips that are on the Copic markers so uh, at a much more affordable price so what I like about them and why I chose them was not only cost because Copic stuff is going up exponentially, but because uh, the people who reviewed, there's lots of reviews on them, they said that they blended really well. And they really do. I mean, I'm, I'm no Copic color expert, alcohol marker expert, but these really did blend well. Um, with Even with just the same color. In fact, uh, if you wanted to layer up your alcohol markers by using just one color, you could lay, lay down your color, let it dry for a few minutes and absorb into the paper, and then come back in and you'll be able to add some shadows. But th with these, it blends in really nicely. So just my observation in the little bit of time I've used it. So here I'm just coming in with like a teal aqua for his little beach shorts. And then for his um, little cocktail that he's drinking. I used a soft pink color that I used also inside his ears and a light blue for the ice cubes and a little bit of a light yellow for the the lemon wedge that's on the uh, outside of his glass. This is a nice dark brown that I'm using to color in his beach chair and then for his uh, Oh, this one is for the aluminum. So the little base there that would be like the aluminum part of the chair, I just use a nice cool gray. And then for his sunglasses, his frames are going to be this red, reddish magenta color. And then I just color the lenses black. I just use a black alcohol marker that comes in the set um, and colored those black. You could use a soft blue so that you can kind of, you know, kind of gives that you know, like mirrored look, but I, w I like the black better. Um, he just looks, looks like a cool, chill Kawaka hanging at the beach for the day. So here's my, my yellow for my lemon, and I'm gonna I colored the other 
pieces off camera. So here I'm coming in and showing you the die cut frame that I use just on some heavyweight black card stock. Uh, when I make shaker cards, I don't like to use the foam. So I always use layering dies to create frames. And so to have this super simple triple frame set, um, for the mini slim lines is perfect because I can just cut out a bunch of frames and not have to tape some together and do all that stuff. So really, really like that. So here I'm coming in and doing this super simple surf scene and Salty Ocean, I come in at the edge so it's nice and dark and then I use just what's on the pad and I fade it out and then I bring the antique linen up a little bit higher and do the opposite and fade that into the salty ocean that way you have a nice blend of those two colors and it's like sitting right there in the surf um, and that's the the look I was going for my husband and I are fortunate to live near the coast of North Carolina um, southeastern North Carolina and every chance we get we're this is exactly what we're doing we're just doing what we love and hanging at the beach and and chilling out so um, here I'm going to stamp up my sentiment and I'm going to use the same obsidian amalgam ink. And once I get that done, now um, I do want to mention that I prefer to do my ink blending on hot pressed watercolor paper. So that is the paper that I used to ink blend on and also it's, you know, stamped on, stamped right on the, the hot pressed watercolor paper and the, uh, Amalgam ink did really well. It didn't bleed and, and stretch out and absorb into that watercolor paper because it is 100% cotton. So I really liked how that stamped. So now I'm just putting my frames together. So here I've got the double-sided adhesive and one of the frames, and then I'm gonna take the piece of acetate, the mini slimline acetate, and layer that over the top. And that's gonna create the, the initial window and then I'm going to take some Barely Art Glue and create and layer up the other frame. So I cut the black cardstock from the triple frame, the largest triple frame, five times. Now, that was enough of a window for me, depth of a window for me to have a little bit of a shake in the card. I don't need an excessive amount of shake. Um, but if you want to put more stuff in there or you want to have a little bit more movement, you may want to add, you know, another another frame or two or three more frames. Um, it's really your preference at that point, but I thought five was enough. So here I'm getting all the frames put together and now I'm just layering it on top and I'll add another piece of or another set of double-sided adhesive around the frame and I will put all of that together here in just a second. I do want to say if you have enjoyed the video up to this point please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment if you like and if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel please go ahead and do that now and ring the bell and select all notifications that way you're notified each time a video has been uploaded. So now I'm just going to use some liquid glue, the Barely Art liquid glue, and add on my Kawaka umbrella and my little sand bucket. And once that gets adhered, I will set that aside for just a minute. And I think I add liquid glue to the outside of the frame because it'll be easier. Oh, no, I put my shaker bits in. So I, I don't use a ton, but I do use enough, I think. And I keep them flat. I don't want them bunched up on top of each other so that I have enough room uh, once I put that base down to make sure everything's gonna shake nicely. So yep, I do put a little bit of liquid glue and I will add, because this is watercolor paper, I wanted to make sure I had enough wiggle room if I had to slide anything around because I placed it and didn't get in it lined up initially. So taking a couple blocks just to add some weight for that to dry. My card base is the Stormy Sky cardstock from Gina K and it is an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So I cut that on the eight and a half side at six inches and then on the 11 inch side I cut that at seven inches and then I score at three and a half and that gives a nice little you know border of the card base 
um, so that you can see that. Now everything's dry, I'm going to add my liquid glue to put this onto my card base and that is going to finish up the card for me today my friends. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I would like to thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you had a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next video.